time is your time. Your time is my time. Hi ho, everybody. This is Rudy Valley and Company. Our usually quiet, dignified, and orderly preparations for this broadcast have been seriously disturbed this week by the presence in our midst of Miss Polly Moran, movie partner of Marie Dressler. In fact, our rehearsal this afternoon was turned into a shamble when she insisted on playing the trombone while seated in the trombone player's lap. I'd advise you to simply ignore Miss Moran. And I might add, try and do it. The more sane members of our cast include Leo Carillo, distinguished stage and screen star, recently imported from Hollywood to act as master of ceremonies on the chase in San Bernal. Miss Catherine Perry, singing star of Lou Leslie's new Blackbird Review to be produced in London this fall. Rudy Weedoff and Benny Kruger, the two most expert saxophone players in this or any other world, who together with yours truly have prepared an instrumental novelty we hope you will enjoy. Bob Hope, young comedy star of last winter's Ballyhoo Review. And attired as are the lilies in the field with their new white jacket, the Connecticut Yankees. I'm saying, oh, how I adore you, dear. Never knew your eyes could shine so bright. Never knew real love until tonight. Here in my embraces, love, that's where your place is. Oh, how I adore you. That's where your place is. Oh, how I adore you. Dear. Introducing now Bob Hope, one of the most promising of the younger comics. Bob comes to us with the highest possible recommendation. My old friends, Willie and Eugene Howard, are his sponsors. He shared with them the comedy assignment in Ballyhoo last winter, you may remember. This is Bob Hope. Hello, Jimmy. Hello, boy. Well, hello, Bob. Hello, hello, hello. What do you think of this January? What's the idea of the fur coat? <laughs> oh, I expected a cold reception. No kidding, I really did. Well, you're disappointed. Oh, but I have a little cold, Jimmy. I have a cold. Oh, you have a cold, yes. eh? What are you taking for well, it? Well, make me an offer. <laughs> you know, that cigar you're smoking won't help you very much. Well, give a man enough rope and he'll smoke himself to death. <clears throat> Say, what kind of a cigar is that? Oh, this here, this is a dandelion. Oh, a dandelion. Yeah, I was going to pick up a smaller one, but I saw this dandelion there. <laughs> oh. Well, it's a uh, weed. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, indeed. Say, don't you find cigars hard on the eyes? Do I? I almost went blind before I found this one. <laughs> That's a beautiful fur coat that you were wearing there. Don't what is it, skunk? Yeah, skunk. I thought you'd get wind yeah. of it. <laughs> <laughs> No, Jimmy, that's a present for my father. When my father gave me this coat, I said, Dad, isn't it wonderful what a foul, uh, what a beautiful coat you can get from such a foul-smelling beast? And he said, listen, son, I don't want any thanks, but I would like a little respect. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, Bob, you know, 
In spite of all the things you said about that coat, I think you look very well in it. Oh, but I'm shaky, Jimmy. I had a terrible experience last night. You did, eh? Yes, what happened? Yes, sir. I was held up by two men. No. Held up by two men? <laughs> Where? All the way home. Boy, what a night. <laughs> well, incidentally, Bob, you know, I passed your house last night. I passed my house? That's right. Say, thanks. <laughs> uh, why didn't you drop in? Yeah. Well, there was too much noise there. See, what was all that noise at your house? Oh, yes, that was my father dragging my pants around. <laughs> an awful lot of noise for a pair of pants. I know, but I was in them. Hey, who is that? Oh, that's my brother. And what's the idea of the ba ba? <laughs> he's the black sheep of the family. <laughs> <laughs> what does he do for a living? Oh, he's a throat doctor, Jimmy, a throat doctor. He's a throat doctor, Yeah, right? he used to be a chiropodist, but he worked his way up. <laughs> I've been listening to your broadcast. I don't think you're going to make it. I don't think you're going to make it. I've been listening to your broadcast. Brother, please, what's all that mumbling about? Well, I'm talking to myself. I know, but why are you talking so loud? Well, I'm hard of hearing. (laughs) (laughs) Hard of hearing, that's why. That's off my subject. What I want to know is, can you spell birdcage? Birdcage, that's easy. B-I-R-D-C-A-G-E. You can go birdcage. Just as I thought. It's wrong. What do you mean wrong? It's B-I-R-D hyphen C-A-G-E. Yeah, hyphen. What's the hyphen for? Well, that's for the bird to sit on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, laugh yourself right into that straight jacket over there, boy. <laughs> it's really a shame, Jimmy. That boy is really a hero. A hero? Yes, sir. He saved a girl last night. No. Saved a girl? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, he had two. He saved one for tonight. <clears throat> I see. But I had another brother who was really the bravest man in the world. He was an explorer. That's right. That does take a brave man. Yes, sir. And last year he went to Africa and he was captured by man-eating cannibals. So he sent me a wire and I rushed right down to save him. Did you save him? No, I was too late. When I arrived, he'd already been scratched off the menu. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, 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 well. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> Would you like to buy a kiss for charity? Oh, for charity. Well, after all, Pope has a lot of faith in charity. Ah, <laughs> uh, speak for yourself, Wallington. Now, what is the price of your kisses? Well, I have a 25-cent kiss, a 50-cent kiss, and a dollar kiss. Well, are they all worth their face value? Now, <laughs> uh, what is the difference in the kisses? For the 25-cent kiss, you do all the work. Uh-huh. And for the 50-cent kiss, I help a little. Oh, we help. But for the dollar kiss... <laughs> yeah. You just hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's fine. Well, how about a little sample kiss? Oh, no. If you kiss me without paying for it, I'll scream. Oh, you wouldn't scream with just a little smack. <laughs> there, that'll hold you for a while. A little kiss. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> goodbye, there. Goodbye, goodbye. Oh, that's a great girl, Jimmy, and she's very shy. I asked her before the broadcast, I said, how old are you anyway? And she said, 16. <laughs> She's shy about ten years. Oh. <laughs> but can she make money? She makes money hand over fist, Jimmy. What do you mean, hand over fist? Yeah, she's a manicurist. What, what, what? <laughs> but I think the cleverest girl of all was Eve of Adam and Eve. There was really a clever girl. I mean, she invented modern bookkeeping. Eve did? You mean Eve invented modern bookkeeping? Well, I mean, didn't she originate the loose leaf system? <clears throat> I get it. I get it. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yes, sir. But there was a great team, Adam. Now, of course, they didn't have any competition. Adam had it pretty easy in those days. Jimmy, I wish I'd been on the radio then. What do you mean? You wish you'd been on the radio in the time of Adam and Eve? Why, certainly. Listen, whatever trouble Adam had, no one in days of yore could say when Adam told a joke. (laughs) I've heard that one before. Are you lovable? If you are, then heaven bless you. Oh, how blissable to find you kissable. Then I'd be sure what's in my mind would be permissible. Are you teachable? I can teach you, dear, to love me. Are you reachable? Or like a star that's far above me, are you thisable, thatable? I know you're not high hatable. Are you lovable? You lovable, you. Of a popular song 
due to its made in many radio repetitions, is extremely short. You will probably hear a great deal of these two in the next few weeks, and then suddenly, oblivion for them. Are you lovable? And under a blanket of blue. Fourteen years ago, the town of Westbrook, Maine, became suddenly and quite unwillingly saxophone conscious due to the violent efforts of a young man known to the neighbors as Hubert Valley. Two men were responsible for Hubert's tremendous ambition and Westbrook's consequent anguish. From the first, he derived a technique and a nickname. That gentleman is with us tonight. May I present the Chrysler of the saxophone, perhaps the greatest soloist the instrument will ever know, Rudy Weedoff. Mr. Weedoff, and may I present now the second idol of the young man from Maine, Benny Kruger. <laughs> you know, Benny is famous for the number and variety of humorous effects he is able to coax from a sack. For instance, the hiccup. <laughs> the steel guitar. Flap tongue. The 
the rooster. <laughs> and laugh, Kruger, laugh. Enter now the prodigal son from Maine. <laughs> the two masters and their eminent disciple unite now in a trio number, demonstrating that the saxophone is a legitimate instrument, as capable of producing really beautiful music as a more traditional symphonic instrument. The number, Mighty Like a Rose. <laughs> Celebrated comic tune, Mr. Gallagher and Mr. Sheen. Thank you. 
tribute to those two boys with Isham Jones for their contribution to the field of popular songs in writing Blue Prelude. the director of Fleischmann Health Research, Dr. R. E. Lee. Wayne King, who plays a waltz, as only he and his boys can play it, Revived an old one several Sundays ago. As I listened to it at my lodge in Maine, I made a mental note to include it on our program. Here it is. Lonesome, that's all. It seems like a year since I've seen you, dear. Yet I know it's been only a day But the hours seem long And the world goes wrong For it's empty with you away And I wake each from each dream Of your loveliness To sing once again into loneliness And I'd give all the world For just one caress I'm lonesome, I guess That's all The faces I see Don't appeal to me For it's your face I long for today with its dear little smile That makes life worthwhile For it drives all my cares away And I dream of your lips And your eyes are blue And wonder if your heart is dreaming too And my own heart is crying I'm lonesome for you. That's all. You are listening to the Fleischmann's East Hour, directed by Rudy Valley, who presents Polly Moran, Rudy Weedoff, Benny Kruger, Bob Hope, Catherine Perry, and Leo Carrillo. Mr. Leo Carrillo, the busiest actor now acting. He's making a new picture out in Astoria. He's bringing a charming consignment of humorous comment 
to the Chase and San Bernard each Sunday. And he's here tonight to recite for us, at my request, a famous dramatic poem. Coming as I do from a state in which a large portion of the population is French-Canadian, it is particularly enjoyable for me to hear once more William Henry Drummond's celebrated verse. The Wreck of the Julie Plant. Mr. Carillo. Was one dark night on Lake Saint Pierre, the wind he blow, blow, blow. And the crew from the woods cow, Julie Plant, get scared around round below. For the wind, she blow like hurricane. And by she blow some all. That's how was up on Lake Tampier, one hour from, from the shore. The captain walked the front deck, and he walked the hind deck too. He called the crew up from the hole, and he called the cook also. The cook, his name was Rosie, and she came from Montreal. She was chambermaid on lumber barge on the Grand Lagine Canal. For the wind, she blow from northeast-west. The south wind, she blow too. When Rosie cried, Bonjour, Captain. Bonjour, what shall we do? The captain threw out the big anchor, but still the scow she drifts. The crew can pass upon the shore because she lures the skiff. Oh, the night was dark like one black cat, and the wave rolled high and fast. When the captain Take the rosy girl and he tie her to the mast. He then put on that life preserve and he jumped off on the lake. And he said, Goodbye, my rosy dear. I gone drown for your sake. Next morning, very early, about half past two, three, four, the captain, crew, and Rosie, too, was caught upon the shore. For the wind, she blow like hurricane. Come by, she blow some more. And thou boss up on Lake Sampier, one hour from, from the shore. Now all you wood scow sailor men, take warning by that storm and go marry one nice French girl and live on one big farm. For the wind can blow like hurricane and suppose uh, she blows them all. You can't get wrecked. On Lake Saint Pierre, so long you stop on shore.
most love songs and romances end happily. In this semi-classic and song, however, the girl does not fall in love with her captor. Her greatest desire is to return to the land of the sky blue water. the land of the sky blue water, they brought a captive maid, and her eyes, they are lit with lightning, but her heart is not afraid. But I steal to her lodge at dawning. I woo her with my flute. She is sick for the sky blue water. The captive maid is. producer of Blackbirds of 1928, is noted as a discoverer of talent. Mr. Leslie's latest find, a girl who will be starred in this season's Blackbird show, is with us tonight. Her name, Katherine Perry. Her first song, the hit of the 1928 review, I Can't Give You Anything But Love.
Jimmy McHugh and Dorothy Field, the featured number of the 1933 Blackbird, now on the verge of rehearsal. Miss Perry gives us a pre-hearing of Don't Blame Me. That lucky day I found you I've hung around you Just like a fool Falling head on heels In love life Oh, kid, I'll Oh, fool My poor heart is in an awful state now But it's too late now To call a halt So if I become A nuisance Is But how can I help it? Don't blame me. Can you see when you do the thing you do? And after we've kissed, if I can't resist you, About two years ago this time, we featured a bouncing, jingling foxtrot, which certainly deserves repetition. I'm keeping company. company, happy as I can be. I'm going to settle down, stop all the running around. I'm keeping company now. I took a look at her. She took a look at me. I got a notion and gave her the notion, and I'm keeping company now. Always thought that I was the kind of a guy who would never wed. But the sweet romancing and dancing and glancing went to my head, went right to my head. I took her home to my, she made a hit with her. I'm going steady and I'm feeling ready and I'm keeping company now. the other night recalled me of his show, Here Goes the Bride, one of the loveliest songs in poem form from that show was, Hello, My Lover, Goodbye. I have roamed around 
I've always found that love will come and love will die. It's always hello, my lover, goodbye. There often came a night that brought delight, but ended with a lonely cry. It's always hello, my lover, goodbye. I would be clay within love's hands. I would obey all love's commands. Yet like the ever-shifting sands, I drift away. I only hope to find some peace of mind and put an end to wandering why. It's always hello, my love. Presenting Miss Polly Moran, partner of Marie Dressler, and any number of riots, alarms, and excursions on the screen. Polly has promised us the lowdown on life in Hollywood. Meet Miss Moran. on behalf of my partner, Miss Mari Dressler, for the way, and myself also, for the way you have accepted us in pictures. We strive to please everybody, and in the future, we hope to do bigger and better singers than we have ever done up before <laughs> us in our life. For, ooh! <laughs> that wouldn't be your palsy wallsy would it? I should say now. And then so many people, they said to me, Holly, what'd you get out of pictures for? Why did you leave Hollywood? Oh, I said, do you remember when I used to do those chambermaid parts? I played them so long, I started to answer the ads in the Sunday paper. I was living the part on and off on the screen. Well, of course, there's a great many out there in radio land. I know among the young ones, the young girls and the boys, they all want to go to Hollywood. Oh, but it's so exaggerated. They exaggerate everything, even our ages. Now look at Marie and myself. We're just a couple of babes. That's all we are. I resent that. Now, really. I want to tell you because this coming St. Swithin, Marie Dressler will be 32, and this coming St. Nicholas, I'll be 28. I think I'll be 28. <laughs> 28? I was 28 when the Hudson was a dewdrop. <laughs> Oh, but I've got to tell you what you read about. You know, the public, you're gullible. You read all these things in magazines about those beautiful homes they live in.
baby. They don't live in them. They don't own them. Didn't I have my picture taken in front of one of them? Picked up a magazine and says, Look, Holly Moran in front of her beautiful California bungalow. I live over a garage out there. <laughs> oh, it's swell. We have everything. We have hot, cold water, both cold. Oh, and the steam heat. Oh, you see my family in the, in the morning. The first room, that was the heat. Give me that heat. I want that heat. You know the heat with a handle on it to trip from room to room? All oh, those oil burners and the salaries. Ah, oh, the salaries, 3500 Oh, they want that for a day's work now. 5000 8000 10000 There was only one that was ever out there that received over $10,000 a week. Can you guess who it was? It was myself! Oh! Nearly knocked out the china. I did. I made enough money out there in leaping photography to last me till I die. What is this, Rudy? Thursday? Well, that is if I die next Saturday or Sunday. Oh, and the fan mail. Bringing in the fan mail and those great big bushel baskets. Ho, ho, ho. That's not fan mail, folks. Those are bills. Oh, don't tell me. We're all three steps ahead of the sheriff out there. I get the fan mail. I go right down every Saturday and say to the postmaster, give me out those two postal cards, will you? Well, that's all I deserve. But of course, I kind of miss it in a way, but I like it here only a kind of, oh my goodness, I'm melting. And I know I'm going to blow out some tubes in this microphone tonight before I get away from it. But one thing I did miss was the, the premieres. Of course, you've tuned into them, haven't you? You've listened to them. We had a big one out there the other night. Ah, oh, they missed Polly at it. I can see them now, with the airplanes up in the air, dropping the flowers. And the streets all roped out. And the police pushing the crowds back. Oh, it's a beautiful sight. And they come there at 8 o'clock in the morning. They bring their lunch boxes, their camp stools, and they sit all day long just to see their favorites go into the theater at night. Isn't that loyalty? Ha ha! And then I wish you could see what they wear. Oh, they wear these great big sprays of white, uh, uh, gosh darn you. No, that isn't it. Galdanias, that's it. And the ermine coats. Oh, the ermine coats. Not one of them paid for. Not one of them. They all go back to the furriers the next day. You can rent them for $5 a night. I pull the switch. I get a little short case to here. Well, two and a half. They're not going to get me. <laughs> then the announcer is standing over here, and he goes up the microphone with that golden voice of his. He says, ladies and gentlemen, we now have Miss Constance Swanson alighting from her rural Royce. Miss Constance Swanson will say a few words out there to those in the land of ears. And up she walks without a... Well, without a thought, and they're always pushing in something here to just their ribs, it is. I don't know what it is. <clears throat> Miss Constance Swanson. Hello, everybody out there there. I do wish you could be here this evening. I know the picture's going to be just too, too divine. She's hoping it'll be a big flop because she's not in it. And I wish you could see the lines and the gowns and the jewels. Oh, the beautiful jewels. The jewels are all phony, too. Nothing's on the level. Even Niagara Falls is a frame-up. I don't believe it's there till I have a honeymoon. And when will that be? I don't know. <laughs> but I still have hope. Then she turns around the and says, May I speak to my mother over the air? They never, they always talk about their mammies. They never mention their pappies. They all got pappies out there. You know that. I do. She says, hello, Mother dear. I hope you're listening in. Now she knows, doggone well, her mother's nowhere near the radio. And radio, I like that. <laughs> you know where the mother was? She was down in the cellar making that home brew. That's where she was. You bet my mother never made it. I made it myself and how I made it. You bet. You don't think I went thirsty for 13 years, do you? <laughs> well, you know, so many people, they say to me, Paul, you, you had your favorite. Well, of course I have my favorite. I have a secret sin on the screen. And is he grand? And when he emotes girls, oh, he just grips you like that. And is he virile? Guess who it is? Jimmy Durante. Oh! <laughs> oh, I love Jimmy. And his girlfriend, Greta Garbo. I hope you're listening. Oh, and get a lot of this. Ah, oh, Greta's 
all right. Oh, I like her. You know, I dressed for five years, three doors from Barbara, and she's very sweet. She is timid. She can't help that. So that isn't an answer. And I used to run by her room, and I'd yell out, Hello, gritty old kid. How are you today? But I kept on running. I never hung around there anymore. Well, I will throw a big herring out at me or something like that. Ah, but I think she's beautiful. I think she's exotic. And when you see us two together, you cannot tell us apart. I get the red light. I want to say goodbye out there in the golden west. Is, is that the key? It's all right. So, la, 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 la. so open up your golden gate. Now, here's where you nail down those radios. California is here. Weissman G. Star Variety Company will be headed by Miss Ethel Barrymore. This is Rudy Valley bidding you all good night.